I'm gonna build a boat. Good day or night to you. I'm Evan and welcome to The Gaming Tome. I've been working on a lot of big crafting projects in the background over the past couple of months, but I need something small and quick to build in the meantime. I need to make a boat, not to like flee the country and start a new life on the open sea, no, no. It's not like I'm being pursued by some cyber pirate that controls an armada of AI-assisted drones or, or anything like, like that. I need to make that boat fast. The deck should be a great place to start. I measured and cut out a shape for the boat from a piece of 3mm thick paperboard. I added some curvature to the tapered ends. It would have been much easier to make the model using hard angles and straight edges, but I wanted to try something a little more difficult. This paperboard will serve as a structural base for the deck. I laid out some wooden beverage stir sticks and cut them to match the curvature of the boat. I generally prefer these over popsicle sticks when crafting in miniature. Their thinner dimensions better fit the scales of miniatures I craft for. I applied a hefty amount of PVA glue to the paperboard, smeared it around with a stir stick, and then placed the deck planks. The planks need a good squeeze to not only fit them all on the paperboard, but also to reduce the gaps between the boards. This here shows that I used too much glue. A wet sponge cleans this up easily. I have not built something like this before, so I am making compromises. Most boats have a curved taper on the front and one along the bottom. This model will need a flat underside so that it can stand upright on the tabletop. The sides could still have a slant, but to make this easier I will forego that detail. I will, however, try to curve the plank sidings such that they taper towards the front and back. Wood can be bent with the help of heat and moisture. I boiled a handful of stir sticks in water for 30 minutes and then cut and bent them to match the deck's outline. For this scale, you don't have to boil the sticks. They are so thin that you could get away with just soaking them in water. It is important to be patient and let the sticks dry before proceeding. I tried assembling one of the sidewalls while the sticks were still wet. It did not work. The waterlogged sticks will prevent the glue from seeping into the wood for a strong grip, as well as prolong the curing time. That is, unless you're using a glue that cures with moisture, like super glue or gorilla glue. Just leave the bent sticks out in the sun for a couple of hours, and assembly will be much easier. I got to work building the mast while the sticks were drying cut pieces of a square wooden dowel to use as the central part of the mast. I want this piece to be removable for storage reasons, so I sliced and carved a square hole in the center of the deck. The wood top was actually easier to get through than the paperboard. The mast inserts tightly into the deck of the ship. I added a box of stir stick and popsicle stick cuttings around the base of the mast. This will hopefully keep the mast from falling over if the connection loosens. I decided to drill a hole into the dowel to insert part of a wooden skewer that will serve as the mast crossbeam. I could have used a power drill, but this screwdriver is roughly the same width as the skewer. Through sheer force of will and the might of the screwdriver, I bored a hole straight through that dowel, and all was well. Nothing went wrong. It actually worked. The way the crossbeam connects to the mast here is very sturdy, but not realistic compared to images of ships I've seen. I could have just 
glued the cross beam on the front and covered the join with a bracket or maybe some string to represent rope. Oh well, it was still fun. It is time to build the sides of the boat now that the bent sticks have fully dried. Most of the sticks needed a little more bending to fine tune their shape right before they were glued in place. I cracked open an old bottle of wood glue to attach these pieces. This stuff is probably a little thicker than it normally should be straight out of the bottle, but that helps hold these pieces in place. After the glue is partially set, it's a good time to go in there and clean up some of the excess drips. The boat sides need a little more detail. I added some extra bits to the inner side walls as well as some corner pieces to the front and rear of the boat. This needs a sail. Paper is a good material for simulating cloth in miniature scale. Just soak it in glue to add strength to the paper and hold it in a certain shape. I'm actually making two boats, so I need two sails. The main difference between them will be that one ship will have the sail unfurled and the other will have it, well, furled. The unfurled sail just needs to be soaked in glue and set to dry. I tried resting it in a position where it would dry into a curved shape, but ultimately the shape did not keep. I think this is because I'm using cardstock instead of standard printer paper that I usually go for. I sort of folded and rolled the other piece of paper to make the closed up sail. This needs a little more detail. Sails get tied up when they are furled. I tied some pieces of string around the bundle. In this scale, they look like hefty ropes. I dropped some watered down glue onto the string to seal it in place and give it strength. The masts are lacking in detail. I tied some string to the crossbeams to look like some sort of rope attachments for the sails. Later on, I came back and snipped the tails off of the knots. That pretty much wraps up the modeling for these boats. Now it is time to paint them. Normally I like to stain the wood with a watered down paint. A thin stain of paint lets the wood grain and color show through. Unfortunately, there are a lot of glue marks between the boards of the ship and those do not take paint as well as the wood. As a result, I compromised and made the dark brown base coat a little thicker. Once that was all dry, I gave the boat a black wash to darken the cracks between the boards. The boat is now quite dark. A brushing of beige will help brighten this back up. I worked on the borderline between dry brushing and over brushing this color. I had more paint on the brush than usual and tried to keep the strokes parallel to the lengths of the boards. This created highlights on the edges of the boards as well as a streaking pattern that serves as an artificial wood grain. The sails got a coat of cream paint and the ropes were painted with a drab brown. I was not entirely convinced that the paint adhered well to the sails, so I gave them a coat of matte varnish. That should seal them in place. When everything was once again dry, I super glued the sails to the cross beams to complete the models. The boats are done. Not too bad. Warping the stir sticks to create the curved sections was cool. I had not done that before and now I have another technique to add to my list of crafting tricks. Or should I say, another page to add to my gaming tome. Get it? Cause that, that's the name of the channel. Get it? You get it. Right? I also like that I was able to make the mast removable. For now, the pieces fit together nice and snug, and this little bit of disassembly will reduce the model's storage profile greatly. One flaw in these pieces that I have noticed is that the undersides of the boats 
are not flat. At some point, the paperboard of the deck warped. Simply attaching the siding boards a little lower should make this a non-issue, but I think the warping showed up after that step, so I'm not sure. I was not initially going for such a dark color scheme, but I think it is a good look. If I ever craft some Corsair ships for the Middle Earth strategy battle game, then this is the color scheme I would go for. Except maybe black sails. Speaking of sails, that big billowing swath of fabric is a perfect spot for a nice decal. I did not apply one here, but that is something to think about in the future. What do you think about these boats? Have you crafted nautical vessels for miniature gaming before? Have you put a ship in a bottle? Hmm. Voicemail. Hello, this is Captain Neckbeard speaking. I'm calling because I lent you some Corgi NFTs and you, uh, you didn't return them, in fact you stole them, so I'm gonna have to take them back by force unless you give them to me. I don't know if you've heard, but I have an armada of AI controlled drones that would destroy you completely, so please give me back those Corgi NFTs or I will destroy you all. Yeah, Captain Neckbeard shining out, stay elite, well not you because you stole my NFTs. I'm hanging up the phone now. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. I'm always looking for ways to improve. If you want to see more content, then set sail, hoist the colors, and press the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep making and keep playing. Have a good one. How do I get this in here?